<laughs> Tyler, good to be back in the lab, buddy. How are you? Good, good long to time see you. To see you. Yeah, it's yeah. not too long. But... Exactly. Welcome to Kyoxi Labs. Yes, it's great to be back uh, here in uh, San Jose. San Jose. Sunny yes. San Jose. The Kyoxi Labs with my friend Tyler <laughs> Nelson. Um, we're doing some fun stuff today. What uh, you you said you promised me a good time. Maybe not a long time. No, but... not a long time. But we're gonna have some fun. We got some yeah. fast stuff today. So. This is one of our recent launches. It's the Kyoxia CD8. Okay. Uh, and we're going to play around with some of the 15 terabytes. 15s. 15s, okay. yes. So this is our data center NVMe class. Uh, it is a Gen 4 part. It's okay. uh, up to 15 terabytes in the CD8. Uh, yeah. It does about 7 gigabytes a second of read. Okay, so it's fast. It, it's a fast 15 terabytes. It's a fa fast 15 terabytes. So okay. a slow 15 terabyte. We're not, you know, I'm not talking about like the very slow, very large... 15s right. that you get from some places. This yeah. is fast, fast 15 tear, and it has a surprisingly high write. It's five and a half gigs of write. Okay. Yeah. What do we? Um, so let's take a step back. Let's pull out for a second. Yeah. So, so Kyoxia, so CD8. So I know you guys have a, a certain naming convention right. to these. So can you break that down for me real quick? CD is a derivative, usually referred to as uh, compact the, disc. This, no, no, it's no. It's pretty small. It, it is. It's very small. It's you know <laughs> two and a half inch. Yeah. Uh, and that one only comes in two and a half inch, not the E3. Okay. So C is a derivative of our Condor. Okay. Uh, it was a code name from yeah. a long time ago. Condor controller. D is data center. Eight is the eighth gen. Okay. So if I see a, the D in there, I know it's a data center drive, and then Correct. it's the generation. Right. Okay. And uh, so it's NVMe, it's fast NVMe, which is cool because, I mean, in my experience, like I've got a lot of, lot of working with some QLC drives, which are quick, but they're not this quick, which is kind of cool. Yes. And um, so it me... works with, so we're gonna play around with GPU Direct a little bit okay, today. Yeah. So, so we got GPUs. Yeah, we have some GPUs. And really? uh, these what? drives are compatible with GPU Direct. They, you know, it's NVMe, they work GPUs. great. Yeah, so GPU? we're going with A100s today. Okay, one. Uh, four. Oh, sorry. Eight. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it's, it's, right. it's, so, a, it's like a DGX. So we can do stuff. Yeah. Oh, we can do stuff. So the DGX. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's go get these slapped in there and figure this out. All right. Sounds All great. Right. All right. So those are some really cool drives that we had over there. Why don't, what are we going to do with them now? We're here in the lab. It's really loud. I got my earplugs in. <laughs> what are we doing? All right. So we're going to throw them in an a, uh, HGX A100. So okay. this is, uh, it's Super Micro's version of uh, NVIDIA's DGX server. So we're gonna throw it in there and do some uh, GPU workloads. Awesome, let's check it out. All right, so that's a little bit on the old side, but the A100 still can hold its own because it's got a couple party tricks up its sleeve, the H100s don't, right? Oh yeah, it's very, very good at rendering workloads and uh, video. Okay, so we're gonna throw some uh, new drives in here that we just took a look at, take a look at uh, the performance, and uh, let's just start with like something light, GDSIO. Let's start installing these. Let's see what we can do. So we just had some fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, and we did some lifting. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, we got our uh, DGX H100, or A100s. A100s sorry, yeah. A100s here. Uh, we put in a handful of the CD8s. Yes, four 15 terabytes. So yeah. 60 terabytes in one box. Yes, did some LSPCIs, some greps. Yep. And some GDSIOs a and had GDS. some fun with it. So direct attached, so we had what a total of 60 terabytes directly attached to the GPU server. And we were seeing some pretty good numbers. Yeah, very good numbers. Yeah. We, uh, we put it in a RAID set, so it was MD RAID, so you're gonna right. have a little bit of RAID overhead. We had some software overhead to deal with. Yeah. And um, we got, uh, I think, what is it, 22.6 on the right and about 20.7, 20 point, or 21, somewhere right in there on the reads. Yeah, about 21 gigs. And then uh, a few IOPS. I think it was uh, 2.7 million IOPS on the uh, the writes. And yeah, then, uh, one meg, yeah. But yeah, the, one meg. Yeah, yeah, the four meg gets a little better throughput. The one meg is a little higher on the IOPS, so. Yeah, and then uh, on our reads, we were seeing about 1.3 million mm -hmm. uh, on the IOPS, and uh, we were using, um, we, we, we wanted to make sure that we went across the NUMA nodes here. So half these GPUs are going to one CPU, half are going to the other. So we went with uh, one on each NUMA node for the test. We were working with, we tried two file sizes. We checked out uh, like a 500 megabyte, kind of like maybe like a small model checkpoint or something like that. And we did a big one, we did a seven and a half gigabyte. Pretty uh, big checkpoint. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we saw some pretty, really good performance out of it. So that kind of brings into question, right? So with the AI story these days and all the conversation that's going on around that, 
uh, there's a need for more data closer to your your model, closer to your GPU. Absolutely. So the closer we can get the, the storage to the GPUs, the less latency, uh, the basically the higher the throughput. If the SSDs are directly on the PCIe switch, so this is a switched fabric here, so if they're directly connect, connected to that, it's very, very fast. You're basically running line speed for the SSD. Well, I was seeing about 200 microseconds of latency to the SSDs. That's pretty low. So when we're doing inferencing on some important data, maybe finance, maybe decision-making stuff, things like that, getting large amounts of data close to your GPU to help those decisions happen faster is the name of the game in those. Absolutely. So, and a lot of the models are huge, so having a 15 terabyte or, or larger, some of these are 30 terabyte NVMe drives. Yeah. Uh, you can store a lot of data locally with that, so. Well, yeah, so that, that brings up some interesting things, some interesting topics too, right? So when we're talking about checkpointing and getting, getting the data out of the GPUs, checkpointed quickly, getting back to computing, right. less downtime, less time with the GPU sitting idle means better, dare I say, TCO potentially by <laughs> providing an, a better drive to your GPU server. Right, so faster SSDs are gonna let you do all those things faster. If you can save your time checkpointing and you don't have to spend yeah. significant time checkpointing, you can keep those GPUs working all the time. So really the point for the storage is to keep the GPUs fed. Uh, so that's why we really, we, we wanna be the storage IO for your AI. So that's, that's kind of our, yeah. our model here. Fast IO, fast IOPS, and we were only using four. I think we had the opportunity to put eight total drives into this system, maybe do some tuning. We could have seen a little bit better, but I mean, when we're talking gigabytes per second, and you know, we've got a lot of gigabytes in these in, of HBM in these guys, and these uh, even the newer ones are even more. Right. We're starting to kind of keep up where checkpointing is coming down in time for for flushing out. Then you can discuss moving it out onto the fabric after that for backup, for redundancy, you know, right. resiliency, and then keep the keep the stuff close to your GPUs fed and as fast as possible. Absolutely. So that's that's what we're working on. This is a really fun fun to play around with. We didn't really tune anything. We just sort of out of the box. Yeah, we raid, just went raid for set, it. and uh, the numbers are really good. So uh, it's it's great. Kyoxi makes great drives, and uh, we're happy to be the I/O supplier for a lot of people. So well, I'm I'm super happy that you invited me in here and let me play with your hardware. I mean, uh, in all honesty, guys, I think I texted Tyler at like 11 o'clock this morning, and it's now five. And I said, Hey, can I come play with your gear? And you were just like, Come have at it, man. Yeah, come, come check on in. out the cool stuff. So really appreciate you having me here, uh, letting us play with the gear. Uh, again, this, these, these boxes, this is the A100 box from Supermicro, um, and it's got a couple of AMD CPUs in it. Do you know the, the memory of the system memory? Uh, that one terabyte. I think has two terabytes of oh, DRAM. Yeah. yeah, no, it's loaded to the hilt. Okay. Um, yeah. Two terabytes of DRAM in there, and then we put in 30 terabytes, or 60 terabytes, I'm sorry, worth of uh, TLC, uh, Kyoxia memory. And uh, got some pretty impressive numbers about it. So we'll link in the description to a little bit of a write-up we'll do on the site on this. And uh, link out to the products for Kyoxia as well for these drives so you can check out the data sheets on those. Make sure you're subscribed, like the video, and uh, give us your feedback. If you like this kind of content, we'll come out here and do more of it. Uh, doing a little messing around in the Kyoxia lab and finding out some cool stuff. Thanks for having me, Tyler. Anytime. Love it. See ya. See ya.